McIntyre, and over the coming weeks, we'll be revisiting old friends from General Hospital, One Life to Live, and All My Children. And wait till you see what Erica Kane is up to in today's show. Whoever said honesty is the best policy probably wasn't watching All My Children way back in 1979 when Erica told one of her biggest lies to husband number three, Tom Cudahy. Tom was the kind of guy who believed that marriage was built on trust. He wanted a bunch of kids, and Erica told him she did, too. And now here's something even I didn't know about. Behind the scenes, the real secret was that Susan Lucci was pregnant with her son, Andreas, at the time. And do you remember the professor, Langley Wallingford? He was the biggest liar of them all, but he sure was smooth. Phoebe Tyler's knees went weak whenever he cooed sweet nothings in her ear. Little did she know he was really nothing more than a con artist. All he wanted to do was get his hands on Phoebe's money. I love this episode, and People Magazine picked it as one of their all-time favorites, too. Oh, Langley, my dear, how good of you to come. So good of you to call, my dear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please do forgive the last minute business, but, well, I hope I didn't interfere with your work. Oh, not at all. As I told you, I just finished a rather grueling morning at the public library. I was ready for a little rest and relaxation, oh. and how better than in your lovely company. Oh. Wait, is you to say so? Oh, oh thank you. Oh, would you care for a bit of sherry before lunch? Oh, I'd be delighted. Uh, may I? Oh, please do. Right. You may as well know, my dear, that in coming here you have saved me from a fate worse than death. Oh, my. What could that be? <laughs> well, my granddaughter-in-law is trying to, been, trying to get me to go out in the country on a... House hunting expedition with her. Aha! Uh -huh. And so my visit has provided you with an out. Ah. Not that I... That was the only reason for my requesting the pleasure of your company. <laughs> However, if she should happen to drop by, she will see that I did indeed have a luncheon engagement. Well, I never did think that I would be indebted to your granddaughter-in-law. <laughs> but I'm glad I am. Oh. Cheers, my dear. Ah, votre santé. <laughs> Well, Langley, Donna is so unsuited to be a member of this family. Now, I just wish Chuck would, that I would write this marriage off as a horrible mistake. Well, she is a bit gauche. Oh, you put it very kindly, my dear. Actually, she's intolerable. Well, my dear, you may take heart in being spared another undesirable daughter-in-law in your family when I tell you the news. You're speaking of Kelly Cole. She was indicted by the grand jury this morning for the murder of Eddie Durant. Ah, oh, it is at last the fetter complete. I heard it on the car radio coming over here. Oh, my dear, it is such a relief. At long last to be out from under that cloud of suspicion. And now the sun is shining through again, and we shall be able to go ahead with our plans, dear Phoebe. Oh, and there is such a heavenly future before us. With the one and only woman whom I have ever truly loved oh. by my side. <laughs> oh, my dearest Phoebe. I want to talk to you. Well, fine, but that's no reason to come barging in here disconnecting me from my mother. You hadn't reached her yet. Well, I had just finished, darling. What's the matter with you? Oh, there's plenty the matter with me. Well, I'll just have to wait until after I've called my mother. There's no need for you to call your mother. Tom, I just want to get her off my back. She's been leaving messages for me all over the place. I know why your mother's been trying to reach you, but it's a little bit late for her to come to your rescue. Come to my rescue? What are you talking about? I am talking about the fact that she is obviously trying to warn you that I am on to your game, Erica. But it's too late because I already know that you have been on the pill. The 
it was obvious from the beginning, Langley, that that Kelly Cole person had to be the murderer. Well, perhaps your son will concede that now. Oh, I do hope so. And then wash his hands like a girl once and for all. Mm. Would you do it? My pleasure. It's so difficult to imagine the attraction. I mean, she's so blatantly not his type. Well, nor was Kitty for that matter. Although she was a cut above that common nightclub singer. She was Kelly's twin. Mm, exactly. And that is the beginning and the end of the attraction for Lincoln, as far as I can see. Well, you may be sure that my attraction to you is unique and incomparable, my oh, darling. My dearest, have you really, truly, never, ever really been in love before? Not like this. When my every thought is of you, my only desire to be near you. Oh, Phoebe, my dear, I can't wait to embark on our new lives together. And I wake up each morning and see your glorious face by my side. Oh, my dearest. And you know now that our future is looking so optimistic, I think it requires a little celebration. You know, um, to proclaim our love to the world. Oh, that would be lovely. Well, at least you can go ahead with your own plans for, for the housewarming. I mean, to show off its wonderful recent new splendor. That only proves that our minds work on exactly the same wavelength. That is the same thought that I had. Have you really? Yes. I even talked to Claudette about it. And she's agreed she's going to cater it from the chateau. Now, that's a smart idea. She's a lady with excellent good taste. Indeed she is. And you, my darling, you shall be my host. Oh, what a delight it will be to appear in public together. Oh, I wish that it could be our engagement party, dear Phoebe. Oh, darling, that wouldn't be proper at all. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't possibly do that. Not till my divorce from Charles is final. Yes, I know. But I long for the day when we can shout our love from the rooftops. Let the whole world share in our happiness. Oh, Langley, that is such a sweet thing to say. <laughs> you know, darling, I would love nothing better than to announce our engagement at the housewarming, but... We have to remember there are all those petty minds out there. They're so ready to pounce on any kind of gossip. Yes, I know. We must be careful not to encourage anything of that sort. Even though we know that it's sheer jealousy that inspires exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, my dear, that reminds me. Speaking of petty minds, there is someone who is making the most outlandish allegations in regard to you. Really? And what could that be? And by whom? Well, the whom is that dreadful Myrtle Farget person. Myrtle Farget? Yeah, yes, you know, the um, Kelly's roommate or a surrogate mother, whatever she calls herself. Well, <coughs> what kind of allegation has she made? Oh, well, it's just too ridiculous for words, but, but she claims she, of all people, that she has known you somewhere in your past. On the pill. Tom, where did you ever hear a thing like that? It isn't true. I'm asking you where you heard that. Erica, I am not a total fool. I knew something was wrong. Oh, I see. So you jumped immediately to that conclusion. I happened to run into Dr. Clater this morning at the hospital. And he told you what? Are you going to listen or are you going to interrupt? Well, so what did Dr. Clater say? Dr. Clater was very surprised when I told him how disappointed we were that you hadn't been able to conceive yet. And when I questioned him, he became evasive and eventually made excuses to leave. Well, what does that prove? Let me finish. It's not what he said so much that bothered me that a strange reaction to my question, so I went to see your mother. My mother? And your brother Mark happened to be in her office. Uh -huh. So I asked the two of them, I asked them if they knew of any reason why you couldn't get pregnant. And their reaction was even stranger than Dr. Clater's. And that's when I began to suspect the truth. How dare you talk about our personal lives to my mother and my brother? And how dare they interfere in something that is none of their business? They did not interfere. Far from it. They did everything they could to protect you. Protect me? I haven't done anything. Then you tell me 
why you haven't gotten pregnant. Well, that doesn't mean that I don't want to. Then why did your brother tell me to ask you that question? Oh, I see. You're taking his word over mine. I am asking you a question. Are you taking birth control pills or are you not? Well, I am not going to be pinned against the wall by you, Tom Cuddy. It is a simple question, Erica. It requires a yes or no. I am not going to be intimidated by my mother and my brother. No one is intimidating you. What proof do they have for these accusations? No one's accusing you. I'm not accusing you and they're not accusing you. I am asking you a question and I am waiting for an answer. An answer you think you already know. Am I wrong? You see, you will believe everyone except your wife. I am waiting to hear from my wife. Well, I won't dignify that question with an answer. You can't even tell the truth now, can you? Well, you know the truth. I want a baby as much as you do. Then why? Are you taking these? Where did you get that? I found them in the back of your dresser drawer. You have the nerve to go snooping in my thing? I had to because it seems to be the only way to get the truth out of you! Remember, there's something else you need to know about Pine Valley in 1979. Eddie Durant was dead. And if you don't remember Eddie, he ran the chateau when he wasn't beating up Brooke or blackmailing Langley. Anyone could have killed him. Brooke, Langley, Myrtle, Phoebe, her son Link. Kelly Cole was so strung out on drugs she couldn't even remember if she was the one who did it. Practically everyone in Pine Valley hated that awful Eddie. Ugh. Myrtle Foggett? I think whatever are you talking about? Well, I heard it from Benjamin. He says that woman claims that she knows you from somewhere. Why, that's ridiculous. When would our paths ever have crossed? Precisely what I said. I said your backgrounds were far too divergent. Well, where would the woman have come up with such an idea? Well, I don't know, but evidently she made that statement to Edna, and then Edna repeated it to Benjamin. Edna? <laughs> well, of course. Edna's had it in for me ever since she had the mistaken notion that I was interested in her. She claimed that Virgil even mentioned it to you one time. Mentioned it to me? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't remember any such occasion. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Give me just a moment, please. Oh, but of course, dear. Hello. Oh, Anita. Oh, I haven't heard from you in a long time. Oh, really? Where did you hear that? And you mean they actively accepted the application? Oh, how fun. You've got to be kidding, Wiley. I kid you not, Eddie. I know that woman. What did you? You didn't admit that, did you? Certainly not. I, I, I gave her the business and got out of there as quick as I could. If it ever comes to her where we met. Where was it? Oh, it was years ago on a carnival. I snatched a purse. You what? That's right. And the old battle axe got a stranglehold on me and beat me within an inch of my life. <laughs> Wait a minute. Just one minute. You mean Myrtle did that? That woman is a powerhouse. She's definitely the violent type. <laughs> Sent me straight to the fuzz. <laughs> where did all this happen? Oh, it's engraved on my mind. Topeka, Kansas. I can see the jail cell now. <laughs> Talking about your small world. It's not funny, Edward. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. If he figures out who I'm in, then I'm in deep trouble. I have got something very important that I want to ask you. What? Well, it's so obvious, I don't know why it didn't occur to me before, but... Kelly, I want you to remember back very carefully to the night of the murder. I can't. I can't. I can't remember anything after I ran out. I just can't. But I'm not talking about afterwards. I'm talking about before. 
Do you remember anything at all? Because you remember Ed right up to that point, don't you? Yes, I, yes. Okay. Now you tell me this. Did you ever, ever go into Eddie's office before your first performance that night and steal his gun? No, of course not. I wouldn't want to touch it. Good. Kelly, we've got nothing to worry about. What are you talking about? Darling, it's so simple. It's so simple. I don't know why I didn't see it before. There is no way, no way in the world that you could have killed Eddie. Because don't you remember? Freddie said that Eddie's gun had been stolen before your first performance that night. <sighs> you see? You see, somebody else had to have taken that gun. Somebody else had to have killed Eddie. Even if by some far stretch of the imagination you had you'd gone running out of the chateau, gone to Eddie's office to get the gun, it wasn't there, Kelly. <laughs> oh, darling, you are innocent. And I'm going to be able to prove that in court now. We are going to be able to lick this thing together. I think I believe you, champ. For the first time, I think I believe you. Well, you just stick with me. We're going to come out punching. Well, Erica, are you still going to deny it? I just don't believe that you had the nerve to go snooping in my things like some kind of sneak thief. To think that you could lie to me about something like this. I had good reason. There is no good reason to lie about wanting a baby. Well, I had to, Tom. You were so insistent. And you, so willing. Listen, I haven't, I haven't been on the pills for a long time. Oh, come on. No, I really haven't. I just started going on them, you know, because of the disco. The disco? Well, I didn't dare get pregnant now, you know. I just wanted to get the place off the ground. Is that right? Then you tell me why there are only five pills left out of a full container. Tom, there are only, there are only 28 pills in the whole container to begin with. Which means that you have been on them for at least 23 days. No telling how many other containers before this one. No, that's not true. I only had just that one. What difference does it make when you have them or on them? You lied to me. You told me all along you wanted to have a baby. And all the time these were stuck in the back of your drawer. I was going to go off them. I really was. No. No, it's too late. Because I don't care if you choke on these pills. Oh, don't say that. I told you after your disco to see that if you lied to me one more time, that that would be the end of our marriage. But I didn't lie to you. You lied to me every time you took one of those pills. But you can't mean that that's the end of our marriage. That is exactly what I mean. But I'll go off the pills. I'll go off them right now. You did not hear what I said, Erica. I said it's too late. I don't care what you do now. Our marriage is finished. You don't mean that. You can't mean that. I want you out of my apartment, and I want you out now. Your apartment? Yes, my apartment, my furniture. And I want you and your belongings out, and I want you out now. Is that understood? Tom, Tom, you can't be serious, and you can't throw me out of my own home. My home. My home before I ever met you, and I'll not be inconvenienced. Well, I won't be either. I mean, I'm your wife. Tom. You have destroyed our marriage, and you will be the one to move out. I just told you I'll go off the pills. I'll go off them right now. And I just told you that I don't care. Now you get out of here, and you get your bags packed, and you get everything out of the apartment by tonight, or I will throw everything on the street. Tom, please don't do this to me. We can work it out. There's nothing left to work out. You call the shots, Erica. You're getting just what you ask for. So where will I go? Frankly, I don't give a damn. <laughs>
shades of scarlet and red. You know Erica. She's not about to give her man up without a fight. Tomorrow is another day, and tomorrow's show will explain just what I mean when we dig into our video archives for part two of this Daytime to Remember. Tomorrow on GMA, the Daytime Emmy nominations, live from New York. Weekday mornings on Thursday.